Hi, and welcome to this new video where I'm going to talk about Liquiter, the software by Just True for the analysis of soil liquefaction in seismic conditions. Before starting, I remind you to subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be always updated about our more recent videos. We can now start. This is the window that you will see after opening the software. The different functions can be managed from the bar of tabs, from the vertical bar on the left, or, alternatively, from the buttons in the toolbar. The first step to analyze a problem of liquefaction is to input the general data from this window. At first, it's necessary to choose the standards of reference. For example, in this case, we are going to refer to Eurocodes. Afterwards, a very important information to be defined is the depth of the water level respect to the ground surface. Let's suppose that it's equal to one meter in this case. In this section, we can define the characteristics of an eventual load applied on the ground surface and the computation method for the stress state among the theories of Boussinesque or Westergaard. Finally, the seismic data of the problem can be defined from this section. We assign the bedrock acceleration, for example 0.15. Then we have to choose the subsoil and topographic categories. As a consequence, the coefficients of amplification are automatically updated from the software based on the chosen standards. Finally, let's assign the magnitude, for example equal to 6, and the distance from the epicenter, for example equal to 20. As a consequence, by clicking on this button, the software performs the calculation of the peak ground acceleration. The next step is to define the analysis options from this panel. As required by the standards, the liquefaction verification can be avoided when at least one of the circumstances indicated in this list occurs. The verifications can be avoided in the software by choosing the proper voices. Besides, from these fields we can modify the conditions for avoiding the verifications. As well known, the liquefaction verification can be performed referring to different methods available in the literature or required by the standards. The method to employ to perform the verification can be selected from this list. However, the selected method can be activated also later from the specific panel. Finally, before moving on, it's necessary to define the method to employ for the calculation of MSF, the magnitude scale factor. From this voice, we can choose the method based on the selected author whereas from here we can choose among one of these three equations available in the literature. From here, instead, we can choose the method to employ to perform, eventually, the calculation of the potential liquefaction. This calculation can be performed at the depths of 10 meters or 20 meters. Before performing the calculation, it's finally necessary to define the stratigraphy of the problem under examination. In this table, we have to input the characteristics of the different layers with referring to geometry, unit weight, and results from the field tests. For time reasons, I have already prepared the numerical values concerning my example in an electronic sheet. Therefore, I just have to paste the copied values. By selecting the concerning voices from this button, we can represent the trend of an SPT, QC, and the shear waves Vs assigned as input, along with the defined stratigraphy. At this point, we are ready to perform the analysis. As I already mentioned, Liquiter gives the possibility to perform the liquefaction verification referring to different methods, which can be applied from the panels here on the top. The difference between the different methods consists in the questions employed to perform the verification and the parameters required as input. The purpose of this video is not to analyze the available methods and the concerning differences, rather it's that of understanding how these methods can be applied using the software Liquiter. To not be repetitive, 
In this video I'll show you how to use Liquider, only referring to the famous method proposed by Sid and Idris. After this, you will be able to apply the other methods analogously, where the only difference will be represented by the input parameters. By clicking on the specific panel, we can apply the method. In this table, we define the percentage of fine fraction and the validity of the method for the different layers. For the sake of simplicity, in this case, we assume that the fine fraction equals 35% for all layers. Besides, from this menu, we define that the method is valid only for clean sands, referring to the first two layers, whereas it's valid for silty sands and silts, referring to the third layer. In the right table, the soil layers assigned in input are subdivided into small layers, with a thickness equal to 20 cm, for which the verification will be performed. Before moving on, we have to consider that the method based in Idris performs the verification referring to the value of N160CS, whereas we assign as input the value of NSPT. The coefficients and other information necessary to correct the value of NSPT and calculate N160CS can be assigned here. At this point, after checking that the input data are correct, we can perform the computation from the specific button. In this way, the equation specific of the selected method will be employed and the cells of the table will be filled in with the obtained results. In this column, we can visualize the obtained values of the safety factor, whereas in this column, we can verify if the considered layer is acceptable of liquefaction or not. For example, in this case, we can observe that at some depths, the soil is not susceptible of liquefaction, whereas at other depths, it is. The obtained results can be also visualized graphically from this button. In this plot, the green dots define the soil layers that are not susceptible of liquefaction, whereas the red ones define the soil layers susceptible of liquefaction. This representation can be closed by right-clicking, then close. Finally, here we can visualize the calculated value of MSF and the liquefaction potential at the defined depth and with the selected method. At this point, the liquefaction verification with the method by Sid and Idris is concluded and can be performed using the other methods according to the same logic. After performing the liquefaction verification with all the methods of interest, it's possible to account for also the presence of eventual stabilization measurements from the specific panel with particular reference to vertical drains or gravel piles. In this case, we have to choose the drain arrangement, the diameter, the spacing, the epicentral distance, the coefficient of horizontal permeability, the coefficient of volume compressibility, the length of the piles, and the angle of shear strength. By clicking on the button computation, all the results will be shown in this section. Liquiter also gives the possibility to perform again the liquefaction verification after the measurement construction. To this purpose, we have to select this option, go back to the panel concerning the considered method of analysis and click the button computation. The results will be consequently updated and can be visualized graphically. For example, in this case, we note that the dots are now green at all depths. This means that the design measurement will be able to avoid the occurrence of liquefaction in the considered depths. Finally, there are other functionalities of Liquider that I would like to show you. As known, the soil could be susceptible of liquefaction if the grain size distribution falls inside a defined area. This verification can be done from the specific panel. In particular, it's necessary to input the data concerning the grain size distribution of interest in this table and compare the corresponding curve with the area defining the soil susceptible of liquefaction already included in Liquiter. In this case, 
I have copied the data concerning my grain size distribution from an electronic sheet, which I'm going to paste now in the table. As we can observe, the grain size distribution given as input falls inside the area defining the soils acceptable of liquefaction. From this panel, it's instead possible to calculate the liquefaction-induced lateral displacements in case of lateral spreading. Specifically, the software employs the method by Bartlett and Yaud. In this case, we have to assign the thickness of the soil characterized by a value of N160 less than 15, the average size of the grains, the average content of the fine fraction passing through the sieve number 200, the design magnitude of the earthquake, the epicentral distance, the ground inclination, and the ratio between the slope height and the distance from the free face. By clicking on the button computation, the calculated value will be shown here. Finally, from this panel, we can calculate the post-seismic settlement. For any layer, we have to choose if it is a cohesionless or a cohesive soil. In this case, let's assume that all the three layers are cohesionless. Afterwards, we have to assign the parameters of interest for the type of selected soil. For example, let's assign the following values of compressive index, shear modulus, and average degree of consolidation. At this point, we can perform the computation from the specific button and the obtained values will be employed to fill in the table. Analogously to the verification against liquefaction, the calculation is performed by splitting the soil in many thin layers with a thickness equal to 20 cm, for each of which a settlement is calculated. The total settlement, calculated as the sum of the settlements of the single layers, is shown in this field. With this, we can conclude the video tutorial about Liquiter. I thank you for watching and, waiting for the next video, I recommend you click the button like of this one if you would like. Bye!